Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, welcome everyone to this session uh, entitled Data Monetization in Telecom Industry. So a little bit about myself. My name is Fatih Baqiwa and I am a data scientist and marketing analytics expert with more than 13 years of experience, mostly within telecom industry. I had the chance to be part of the teams who build data science departments in different multinational telecom operators in Algeria and Saudi Arabia. Today, inshallah, we're going to talk about how telecom companies are monetizing their data. And we're going to focus especially on the external data monetization part. So the agenda for today, uh, we're going to talk about the recent telecom challenges and how the operate, telecom operators are uh, facing them. We're going to talk about uh, briefly about internal and external data monetization, and we're going to uh, present one use case uh, for the Algerian market. So the recent telecom challenges, uh, we have in the last couple of years, uh, the demand for traditional services is decreasing. And this is mainly because of the OTT services who are showing an increase uh, over the year. So we have here an estimation that uh, over the top services market is going to reach 86 billion by the end of 2026. So OTT services are eaten from traditional telecom service market share. And there is also a shift in mobile users' preferences and means of communications. So customers are using less voice and more messaging. Also, there's a continuous change in technologies and uh, investing in technologies is very expensive, especially the infrastructure. We have also uh, some disruptive technologies who are coming every five years, like the 5G, IoT, electronic SIM, et cetera. And there is also a price war between telecom operators because telecom operators try to keep and safeguard their market share. So they use uh, to drop their price more and more, which uh, of course resulted on uh, telecom companies losing uh, more and more revenues. And also another type of operators uh, joined uh, the market, which are the mobile virtual network operators, the MVNUs, who uh, also disrupt uh, customer experience. So uh, customers are becoming more and more uh, uh, exigent around uh, the service they should be offered. So the, the, the new telecom strategies in order to face that, uh, what you can see here in the chart, so this is digital revenue growth, uh, both in relative and absolute figures. Uh, between 2018 and 2023, so we can see here that traditional telecom services are uh, showing a big drop in terms of relative and also absolute growth. And the, in the other hand, uh, non-traditional uh, services such as, such as digital games, uh, uh, OTT videos, smart home, and all this is, all, uh, of course, driven by mobile data. They are showing uh, in, an increase. So many telecommunication companies decided to keep pace with this transformation by reconsidering the way they operate and the relationships with their customers. And this by engaging in what we what is called a comprehensive digital transformation to move from mere companies that provide classic communication services to digital companies that provide digital solutions and services in various fields, including traditional communications, information technologies, such as cloud computing, Digital payment and fintech. Some um, companies are investing uh, in fintech either by launching uh, some uh, subsidiaries or by acquiring startups that work in the field of fintech, and also by partnering, uh, do, doing partnership with digital media companies such as Netflix. In the Middle East, here in the Arab world, we have Shahid. We have. Uh, Joey TV also, and some other telecom companies are investing heavily in IoT and Smart City, uh, as the, the telecom infrastructure is considered as uh, the enables for those type of project. 
So some other telecom companies are investing in every um, type of uh, technology in order to uh, bring uh, new revenue streams to the company. So regarding internal data monetization and classical data monetization, telecom companies uh, use to leverage the, uh, the data asset and use uh, use data science and machine learning and AI technologies in order to uh, provide better service to the customer. So uh, some traditional uh, use case are real-time analytics, preventing customer churn, location-based promotion, product optimization, or try to optimize the product by merging services or creating a product. Also, we try to increase the network security and optimize the network, uh, try to predict fraud detection and to do price optimization using all the data uh, internally. For external data monetization, so it's not really about selling the data, but it's about leveraging the data assets within each telecom operators in order to sell insights and uh, to sell uh, information that can be used by external uh, third parties, such as retail, banking, finance, government. So one use case in Saudi Arabia is uh, leveraging uh, telecom data uh, in order to provide uh, Riyadh metro departments with insights about uh, movement, crowd movement, so they can plan their trips accordingly. Also using uh, internal data in order to optimize uh, advertising placements. And some operators use web browsing history, app usage, and location data to personalize rewards and deliver target advertising uh, for and uh, from third parties. Uh, but one of uh, the use case that is most used by telecom operators in data monetization is market locator. Uh, and it's, it's a tool um, that is provided to third parties B2B. Uh, so it's considered as analytics as a service and it enables diverse companies to gain access to powerful analysis based on real hard data. So several telecos have been using market locator to create new revenue streams by providing anonymized okay, anonymized and aggregated big data to their B2B customers in the form of self-service population analytics and mobile marketing solution. So uh, businesses can get access to, to uh, the tool and they can slice and dice in geographically and uh, get information around uh, specific areas and they can plan accordingly their uh, retail placement and site planning and uh, uh, optimizing their advertising placement and so forth. So uh, we're going to show one external data monetization use case. And we have here a case where uh, the top leader uh, communication company in Alger Algeria, which is called Aurelis, and the top leader in uh, household electronic items in Algeria, which is called a Condol. So we have here a partnership and Condol wants some insights about geolocation information in order to uh, optimize the site planning. So the objective is a store footprint optimization for Condol electronics. And uh, what we are trying here to do is to identify new sites for condo stores with high potential areas, relocate lower performance uh, stores and recommend or to modify store types based on locality interest. This is the landscape of condo top competitors around the map of Algiers. We have condo that have 168 stores, the competitor one with 173 and competitor two with 95. And this is the current picture. We have three different types of store, flagship, mid-size, and special that are uh, segmented based on their, average, uh, their, um, their size. And we have some information about the visits, the employee per day, and the number of transactions as well. Uh, 
So how we build the intelligent? We take into account the competitor stores location. We, we build a catchment area mapping around the stores and uh, calculate the potential of the area. We use uh, communication analysis for condolence competitor using social media. Uh, we also calculate the footprint grid using movement of crowd from the internal uh, teleco operators data. And also we can calculate the distance traveled from home to store location. And also we can provide some locality profiling and demographics uh, uh, just to provide uh, Condol with insights about uh, good uh, areas to open new stores. And whatever uh, internal data around customer segmentation, behavioral uh, value segmentation, uh, lifestyle segmentation is also uh, gonna be used. So as we said previously, we are going either to close, remove the sites, depending on the performance of the site or modify the site type or open new one. So what is the most important question here? The most important question here is how to target and profile a store so that if we do this well, a Condol can have a, a, a good uh, edge into over the competition. Okay, so this is the uh, Algeria's map. You can see here Al Ashur, Dali Ibrahim, Al Fayet. And uh, this is an example of from store location. So, what we are interested here is for every store here, we try to, to uh, create a delimitation around the store and calculate the potential of this area. How we do that? We do that uh, by uh, taking every store and then applying a proper algorithms in order to create this delimitation here that you can see those type of polygons that are not overlapping each other. And then we uh, go into link uh, the different cell sites around the store with the store. And from those cell sites, we have customers who are linked to, the, to those uh, cell sites. So we are going to aggregate all the data of those customers in order to create the potential uh, and calculate the potential area of the store. And for the store potential, we're going to use internal data, uh, Condol's internal data. Okay, so here the telecom operator is going to provide the area potential and Condol's is going to provide the store potential and then we're going to use both, okay? This is the area potential, and then we have the store performance, revenue, transaction, footfall, rent, cost, loyalty, customer visit, etc. And then once we have the area potential and the store performance, we're going to create scorecard, uh, and this by applying some weights, either by using some business logic or by using some statistical techniques in order to provide accurate weight for each component. Uh, in, uh, that construct the area potential and the store performance. And then we are going to calculate a final score for the store. So this is the distribution of the stores around the store performance and the area potential. And then here we'll have uh, around nine quadrant. And so we can uh, show here that the, the guys over there, the stores here are the overperformers because they have uh, high uh, store performance and they they are located in a area with high potential the stores here are potential for relocation or or close closure because they are having uh, very low store performance as well as very low area potential uh, the guys with um, uh, good area potential but low store performance are prospective store for optimization we can either upgrade them or uh, change their type or refurbish the site or uh, doing more into the communication so this is just the distribution of the number of stores by quadrants. And um, then also we are going to provide some uh, area subscriber and area revenue uh, scaling in order 
just to show where the potential to open new uh, stores is located. So the final uh, product will be uh, a tool, sort of uh, a dashboard that allow Condor to have uh, uh, 360 degree views of performance, store performance and location performance area potential of the store. So here's one example. Here is the one store located in uh, Rue de la Révolution, uh, Benim Sous. We can see that for this store, uh, we have here very, uh, very low uh, score for store performance and very low score overall. And this is uh, most probably due to the existence of an, another store nearby. So most probably this other store is driving all uh, the traffic. And so the, uh, in this part, we are showing the store performance KPI. And in this part, we're showing the area potential uh, KPIs. You can see the percentage of the gamers, the distribution of the value segment, the device brand, the device type, uh, potential app users, uh, and here related communication, how people are communicating around in social media. Uh, only 2% are talking about washing machine, only 3% are talking about refrigerator, and around 6% are talking about smart TV. So the final decision is, we recommend to close the store because of revenue cannibalization and this store will be closed and uh, uh, the workers here can be relocated to uh, to other uh, store as well. So um, then we have the potential areas for new stores. We are going to leverage the uh, Condol current footprint alongside Aurelie Aure subscriber location. Then we're going to do full profile breakdown for each potential location. And uh, we're going to do some dynamic filtering in order to get to this map. So this map is representing uh, the potential areas for new stores based on customers. We can see that most uh, the, the potential areas in green are within the south of Algiers and the west. So they are around Wilhelm Mandil, uh, Babali, uh, Halma. And this is most probably due because we are seeing a lot of relocating for uh, people around here because of um, ADL and LPP. So people started to, to live in these new places. <clears throat> and we are seeing uh, an increase in customer uh, base around here. And we are uh, asking or we are uh, recommending to, uh, for condos to open new stores, new stores around here. So with the tool, you can also filter <clears throat> uh, the nearest competitor, uh, for example, uh, should be more than three kilometers or uh, less. You can play around here, slice and dice, and the condo management can decide uh, where and when to open their new stores. So uh, this is it. Uh, we reached to the end of this presentation. Hope you enjoy uh, this journey with us. Uh, we are open to any question, if we still have time to two or three questions. And thanks again.